Where do you think for you, like, I know for me and working, you've been sober a lot longer than I have, but, you know, working the steps, the retrace yeah. of things, was it, you know, a lot of us, we just find it's trauma. For me, it was trauma. Yeah, was it, for sure. Was it really a trauma-based thing for you? And I like, yeah. I wanted to be like my heroes, like Motley Crue mm. and Metallica, yeah. and, you know, all the, you know. All yeah. those things. And I came from addictions. Yeah, I think trauma plays like a huge part in it. You know, I think when I look at my childhood, no one in my family drank or did drugs. Like huh. we were all, I come from a pretty religious uh, family and uh, very PG-13 on, on all levels, you know. And um, But it wasn't until like, um, you know, I well, let's see. It's kind of a long-winded story and I don't want to make it long-winded. But uh, so... When I discovered punk rock music, I was about, um, you know, 13 or so years yeah. old. And it just really spoke to me. Like, I always felt like I didn't really belong within my family unit or within anything. Like, even going to school, I was just like, just felt different. And mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I also was, uh, we moved to America. When we moved to America, we lived in the Inland Empire, which is about like two hours out of LA. So, the, and at the time there was nothing there. It was like tumbleweeds and tweakers. And <laughs> that's it. Like there was no Starbucks or the 210 freeway. And um, so it's, it's, it's a lot nicer now. But um, so there wasn't, it wasn't like uh, there was a, a, a diversity of people there. It wasn't like there was, uh, you know, everybody was kind of just pretty straight laced and normal. Um, I mean, there was some rough areas, but for the most part it was just like, regular people and mm -hmm. then i was like where where's my tribe you know because i loved punk rock music and i could see the the records and like the, you know the there wasn't anyone else that was like outwardly expressing themselves the way that i felt and so i just always felt like out of place you know mm -hmm. and then um i remember i ended up shaving my head and my parents just like lost their minds. How old were you then? I was 14. And well, there's nothing more punk rock <laughs> yeah. than you now when you're 14. <laughs> or Mohawk, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I was, you know, and I was tattooing all my friends by then. And so I think my parents were just like terrified. And rightfully so, you know, sure. they come from a different culture. And they, um, like, like many people, like most people back then, they really associated tattooing with like a, a criminal lifestyle sure, or yeah. like um, prostitution or whatever, you right. know. And so... Uh, there wasn't any tattoo shows at the time to make mm -hmm. it popular. And I just loved it because of the art, you yeah, know, and it was sure. it just spoke to me. So my parents ended up taking me like to a, they, they basically like wrote off all their rights as parents and um, sent me off to this like correctional school. That's what they were sold on. Like, oh, this is like a therapeutic, like boarding school where, you know, they're going to help your kids like, you know, just be stand up you know citizens or whatever right. and little did they know that it was just like the most torturous like awful abusive place that i can't even begin to understand that places like these are still even open and operating Where was that one and this at? was in utah same is that the same one paris yeah went to? yeah exactly my sponsor went there yeah too. so so they know all about it yeah <laughs> it's How crazy old were you when you went 14 so i would th they sent me there when i was 15 and i spent my 16th birthday in oh, there wow and so I was in there for six months and like, I didn't see the light for of day for six months. Like it was really crazy. There's no windows. Uh, I mean, you, and there was just like the most, um, cruel and abusive forms of discipline, I guess you would call it that just was, uh, pr pretty traumatizing, you yeah. know? And I really felt like a desperation to get out. And so I tried my best to play along and then I finally, you know, got out. I don't know if it was because my parents were out of money because these places are super expensive and we were not of wealth, like we were pretty poor. So I think my parents ended up putting the house on loan and all that stuff to put me through these this terrible program. And when I got out, I think I just had so much trauma that like, um, you know, for six months, I wasn't allowed to use the restroom without being supervised. There was wow. no doors on on any restrooms. So like you just have like this sense of privacy just eliminated. Yeah. And I just remember like once I got out, I was like, I really needed to use the restroom. And I was just holding it until it hurt because I was like scared. Like what if I close the door and then they send me back, mm -hmm. you know? And that was around the time where I really started drinking. And like, I didn't realize that I was trying to self-soothe and try to cope. Um, I just felt like I wanted to escape this reality and I wasn't drinking for fun. You know, I think some alcoholics get into it because they're, they're like going out partying with their friends. It's fun. And then it gets out of control. For mm -hmm. me, it was just like, I need to escape. And mm -hmm. so I was buying 
disgusting bottles of like like you know alcohol that I had Thunderbird or something. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boone's Farm. Whatever. Yeah. It was. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think I was I was getting whiskey, but um, but and then I got caught like uh, at, at the the boarding school that I was sent to afterwards, and uh, and so they kicked me out, and my dad picked me up and uh, took me home, and. I think my parents just did the best that they could, you know, with what they knew. I mean, you got to understand that back then there wasn't any internet. I think AOL just barely was launched. Mm. So it wasn't like you could research, oh, let's see a Yelp review on this, you know, because if you if you check out the Yelp reviews now, it's just like horror story after horror story. Yeah. And so it's like my parents were just like, they were told by somebody, this is a great place. Like, look at the brochure. There's all these smiling children. And it's like, <laughs> oh, little do they know it's like nothing like that. So no. so I don't hold, like a lot of people, when they when that, the story broke about that place, um, people were just like, how could you forgive your parents? And it's like, well, I think as a parent myself now, like... I know that I'm just constantly just trying my best mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there's, and I, and I've accepted that I'm going to fuck up, you know, and that's part of becoming a parent, sure. you know? And, uh, um, for me, it's more just like more important to look at like the things that, um, didn't work for me as a child. Like, you know, I basically took notes from my parents of what not to do. You know? Cause <laughs> I, I want to break that chain. Like most people like in trauma, it's like they tend to like repeat it, which is weird. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you look at like domestic violence, like, if if your mom was beaten up in front of you, you have a, a much higher chance of um, choosing a partner that will be abusive to you, mm -hmm. which I think is crazy because you yeah. you know you would think that it would be the opposite. So, but maybe we find some familiarity in that. I don't know. Um, I think I think so because the brain is just how it works and how we identify things. You know, you think like smell and sound, and you know those things trigger yeah. memories. Like if I smell chocolate chip cookies, I think a childhood. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, I hear you know, and yeah. justice for all. It's hanging out with my older yeah. brother. You know, what totally. I'm so yeah. It's, I, I think it's, I think so. I think it's like, okay, this, this is what I know as normal. Yeah. But uh, to me, that's a little bit of like unconscious living too, though, you know, cause like I want to be conscious in the, de the decisions I make. Like, do I, does, does this actually make me feel good or am I doing this because it's what I'm used to? You know, right. it's like, I want to become a better person, especially right. now. I think like having a kid, I know it sounds like cliche and stuff, but like, that's, like so much more important to me than anything that has ever been important to me. You know, it's like, I want my kid to have like a fair chance at like, you know, a good life, you yeah. know, not trying to avoid him having, you know, any suffering. Cause I think suffering builds character as well. But like, th I definitely think I, I went through unnecessary amount of suffering and, sure. and that, that I think could cause issues and baggage and all that stuff. And, yeah. and of course I went to therapy for years after I got out and, um, it took a, a while to, you know, kind of get a grip on things again. And and what's weird is that when Paris Hilton released that documentary, um, you know, she had reached out and said, "Hey, I heard you were you were also at that Provo school. Would you speak on this?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know, uh, I've actually never talked about it. I never told my parents all the this, this stuff that happened in there." And uh, and all these people kind of came out of the woodwork that I was in there with. And it was, it's really sad. There's some, some girls that, um, are having a much harder time. Like I don't think about those days anymore cause I've processed them and yeah. moved forward. Mm -hmm. And some of these girls are still stuck in, um, you know, in the trauma that, that they experienced and it might've been worse than what I had mm -hmm. experienced. Yeah. Mine was pretty bad, but, um, so it's, you know, it's, it's pretty intense. So anyways, I think that's where my drinking started. <laughs> <laughs> so before you became a mom and realized that, you know, parents, you just want the best and, you know, kids are going to fuck up or whatnot. Did you hold on to resentment to them for years after that? Yeah, I think I did. I did, you know, and it's, it's interesting because like I said, I haven't ever really talked to them mm -hmm. about it. And I thought that maybe after... I had put out that video explaining like what happened because these people literally kidnap you in the middle of the night and they uh, blindfold you and take you to the school. I mean, it's like really barbaric. Wow. Um, I thought that like my parents would have possibly heard about it and reached out. But, you know, I also think some generations are like less evolved in like being emotionally available to talk about stuff. Like I, I'm like, I don't mind talking about all of this shit. Like mm -hmm. it's not... You know, I don't mind talking about feelings, you know, I'm like comfortable in, in all my downfalls, you know? Yeah. Whereas I think certain generations, they're like, we don't talk about that stuff, you know, right. this is too hard mm -hmm. to deal with. So, but I think, uh, like my sister, for example, she used to always minimize my experience there. And that really caused a lot of problems. You know, she'd be like, oh, I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I saw girls raping each other, yeah. man. Like, yeah. you know, 
uh, like, I, I, what do you mean it wasn't that bad? You weren't there, you know? Exactly. And um, so it's, yeah, it's it's interesting how everybody kind of processes it, you know? And uh, I mean, I don't necessarily really, I don't really get along with my siblings, so I don't, uh, you know, it's not like they're in my life all the time, but but I think, um, yeah, it's weird. I, w- I don't think I'll ever really bring it up to my parents so much because I don't want to, uh, I don't need to hurt them. I think yeah. it was a hard time for them already, you know? In, mm-hmm. in their mind, they were like, oh, we're losing our daughter, like, she's shaving her head and getting tattoos and you know uh running away and that's terrifying i mean i can't imagine what i would feel like if my son ran away you know and so and i've again i've also forgiven myself for my part in those situations because you know and i've I've asked for forgiveness and made amends with my parents um you know over the years and stuff but yeah i think in the beginning there was some resentment um but i don't know i don't i also don't think that holding on to something so negative is good for you sure, and it's no, like of course so you just got to do the work and process it and yeah. most people don't want to open up those doors and i'm just like oh dude I'll, i will bulldoze through them <laughs> yeah, because yeah. i don't want to live like this you know yeah. <laughs> if i hadn't have done it i would have continued to probably drink myself to yeah that. and mm-hmm. on a lighter note you tattooing at a young age i mean your tattoo you you did okay in tattoos in the future yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> kind of got you on the map it definitely benefited you in the yeah. future so yeah. everything worked yeah, out totally yeah i had uh, to prove my parents wrong a few times yeah right. <laughs>